Well, as I said, uh, we were going to cross stateside. We're now ready to do that. The former presidential candidate for the Republican Party, Julianne Benzel, joins me live via video link. Uh, evening to you, Julianne. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us here on Talk Radio. Where are you in the States, just out of interest? Um, I'm in Northern California. Northern California. Brilliant. Um, I hope you're all right keeping safe as well, because there's there's still fires going on there, aren't there? There are many, unfortunately. Yes, we're OK. Thank you. Um, good, good, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, um, obviously, uh, the Pope, these words, they're pretty significant today. I know that traditionally, there are some exceptions, obviously, but the Republican Party that you represent i'm probably right in thinking it's a fair analysis to say that they're probably the majority and not that in favor of gay marriage um where do you stand on the pope's words well um you know i am a traditionalist i'm a conservative um i do adhere quite strictly to the bible and it you know i've poured over scripture after scripture and prayed very intently on this issue and it's pretty clear the scriptures are replete with example after example that God created man and woman. And when you look at the New Testament, you know, husbands love your wives, wives love your husbands. Um, and so I don't see any scriptural basis for same sex marriage. And so that's where my uh, principled uh, position stands. Okay, but because of the fact that the Pope has endorsed civil unions a civil mm -hmm. form of same-sex mm -hmm. marriage um surely and i say this respectfully it, it doesn't really have anything to do with the scripture or to do with with your beliefs and your religious sure. beliefs free the bible because it, he's not saying right let's have catholic gay marriage he's just saying if that there should be some sort of form of civil union correct and I'm glad you clarified that because when you asked me my personal opinion, that previously was my personal opinion. Now, if you're asking me as a politician or a candidate, then I would adhere to uh, the 14th Amendment, which is due process of the law and equality for all. Um, equal justice under the law is what the amendment actually says. And um, I do believe that every single person, irrelevant of you know, race, creed, sexual orientation, what have you, is given their God-given rights, um, particularly in our U.S. Constitution. And so although I would not be one to go around and advocate for it, um, if you're talking about fundamental rights, um, it's unequivocal that those are there. Um, so, yes, going back to that point then, so, so is it fair to say that, that, that if you are, are someone who is objecting from a religious perspective, you really have no right to object to this? Correct. I mean, I'm not trying to argue. I'm not. First of all, I want to make clear that I'm not interested personally or politically of taking anyone's rights away. I believe that the um, most potent aspect, particularly of the life of Christ, is that he adhered human dignity to every mm -hmm. single person. And so it's not like those of us who do believe in traditional marriage and same sex marriage. It's not like we're out there trying to take rights or, um, you know, dignity away from any human being. Um, and so absolutely, I mean, I am understanding your point. And again, professionally or politically, um, civil unions do give that dignity to any couple. Um, and that's where I would stand as a, as a professional, as a candidate, as a historian. Do you think that people, because it's a conversation I've had many times here in the UK, and I think that the the fear that I think some people of a religious faith have is that it's um, sort of the thin end of the wedge and that this is where it starts, but mm -hmm. that ultimately the direction of travel is that Catholics, Christians, those of the Islamic faith, whatever your faith may be, will be mm -hmm. forced to accept eventually that their yes. churches will have to open up to um, single uh, same-sex couples. Do you... Is that a worry of yours? Do you think that that is something that might happen? Well, that's an excellent question. I'm really actually glad you brought that up because, again, let me just make sure that it's clear that I'm not I'm not out. My my beliefs are not out to uh, take anyone's rights away. But to your point, you can look here in the state of California um, when, you know, uh, same sex marriage was basically legalized out here in San Francisco early on. 
Um, I think most of us were accommodating and even though we weren't in favor of it, you know, we're, we're very graceful people. But the trajectory has been, to your point, that it's not just gay marriage or the acceptance of a gay lifestyle that they want. Um, what we have seen and I have seen as an educator in a public school system is the complete indoctrination that you must agree, that you must believe all the way down to, we had right here in my own city, a kindergartner who without any warning um, to parents or schools or anything, he went, he was a girl and he went into the bathroom and this is kindergarten, a five-year-old and changed and came back out and told his whole class, his name was now Jazz. Um, and, you know, that kind of stuff is, is what is concerning as not only a person of faith, but also as a parent when there is a very methodical, um, very specific approach that it's not just civil unions, it's not just marriage that we want accepted. We want to make sure that um, kids of all ages not only explore this uh, lifestyle, but fully embrace it um, without realizing or giving adherence to the fact that those of us who are sincere in our faith just don't believe in it. I guess... Well, there's a couple of points I'll say to that, because I guess the one thing I'd ask is, is, is that, that when do you think it is acceptable, if at any age, to inform a child that there are people who have gender dysphoria or there are people of the same sex that might want to be in a relationship or might want to get married? Um, excellent question. I would say um, as a parent of five children, I actually find that it's a parent's duty um, and responsibility and a right of ours to be at the forefront or the precipitous of um, you know, talking to our children about very delicate issues such as sexuality. I was never in favor of having you know, sexual education in a public school for this very reason, because what it, it started at one point, the trajectory to your earlier point, um, has, has diverged quite a bit. And so, you know, uh, I don't know if I would say junior high, high school um, necessarily. I just think that sexuality is a very personal um, issue. And I certainly don't want it in the elementary schools, which I will let you know that out here in California, this is a very real issue. Mm. And how old, just so that people know, how old is elementary school in, in, in the States? Because it's slightly different so, here. Yeah, absolutely. You're correct. I live in I lived in England for a year, so you are correct on that. Um, so elementary is from five years old to mm. 12 years old. Okay. So junior high is 13, 14, 15, and then obviously high school is up to 18. So I mean, even a 13 year old or a 12 year old, you know, do they need to be exposed or, you know, those, these are debatable issues. Um, I'm not sure that I'm comfortable saying this precise because again, I believe all children are mm. different. 